Okay, so this is where we finished our last video. And this is the module we're going to uh, look at now. And if I go into the GIS and the modules folder, I dig down to self-list HMU, and that's where I find our JavaScript in question. At the beginning, I'm importing jQuery from npm storage, which I installed using npm install. And then I'm declaring a class. Uh, usually, it is uh, a good practice to have the class name go with all uppercase, and uh, this name should match your file name right here. This is not mandatory, but it's a good practice. Then I'm declaring the constructor. In here, uh, at the beginning, I'm calling an init function, and this I usually call in to test the JavaScript in action. So basically, I put in a console log in there regarding this class name. So once it is loaded up, and if I see this text in console, I know that this JavaScript is, or this module is in action. So later on, I can just remove it. Then I go do the rest of the work. For example, in here, I'm calling a global variable. This is an empty array. This is sort of like a bucket where I'm going to be putting all my email addresses in here, the, collect, the collected email addresses. And then I go for the elements. The HMU start button and the checkbox, which are this guy right here. As you can see, there's an ID, start HMU button, or BTN. And this guy's all the select boxes right here. And they have their classes list-hmu checkbox. As you can see right here. And then I set the events. In this case, I'm going to set the events on the HMU checkbox. Because by checking these, that's where everything happens. So I'm adding a change event and calling this function click checkbox handler. And this function, I'm putting the event E in there. Since this, these are collected using classes, so that means all the checkboxes are in here. So we need to isolate each checkbox via clicks. And that can only happen if we do it like this, e.target.checked. So e.target is the clicked checkbox. So when we collect them with class, everything has a class. But when I click on here specifically, this becomes our e.target. Now we have this specific object in our bucket. Now we're checking the status, whether it's checked or not. If it is checked, then I'm declaring a variable HMU email and trying to collect it from the data attribute of this specific checkbox. Now, if we look closely here, each checkbox comes with a data attribute, data-HMU, and attached email. Whatever email is here is also attached here using a data attribute. And these are coming from advanced custom field or ACF. So when I'm adding them to this email icon, I'm also adding them to my checkboxes like this. So we collect this data attribute and collect this email address and put it inside this variable. And next, we take that email and throw that in that bucket called HMU email array, which we declared here globally. So with each click, 
we go collect that data, that email address, and add it to that array. Else, on the other hand, if the e.target or the, that checkbox is not checked, then we also collect that, that email from the data attribute, but this time, instead of adding it or throwing it to that array, we use a filter and take it out. And that's why once we uncheck something, for example, here, we have some emails, right? And now if I uncheck it, that email goes away. And that happens because of this filter right here. And then at the end, once everything is unchecked, then we verify it like this, that array, that email array dot length, if it is equal to zero, then we get that HMU start button object and add a class of disabled. So this happens. When all the buttons are unchecked, this guy becomes disabled. And this disabled class is added. Okay, so at this point, we are going to focus on making the gravity button URL, which is this guy right here, this URL. This is where we're going to make it dynamic. So first thing what we need to do is take that email bucket or that array and filter out all the duplicates using this filter. We're sending this email in and the index and returning this index of email, which means from this array, it will take this email and only return the first one of the bunch of the same kind. So let's say abc.com, if it finds it, if it is repeated three or four times, it's going to pick up the first one and send the index only and disregard all the rest. So this variable now becomes a unique item array. All the emails in this array are now unique, no duplicates. So next we go take that array and generate a comma separated string right here. To demonstrate it better, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna enable this console and add another one so that we get to see live what's happening. This is the unique one, which is an array. And what happening here after we use this function to create a string? Let's go check it out. Okay, so if I check this HMU, look. So first, this is an array, and this is a string. Let's go with the second one. Oh. So this is still an array, and this is what is being generated after the join function. It's creating a comma-separated string, which we will need to create our URL. And that's what's happening right here. And at this point, now that we have our string, and this is going to be static because we know exactly where we are sending it to because list-hmu this is a page where our gravity form is going to be and this is the dynamic variable that gravity lets us use this will be even clearer when we discuss the gravity form structure later on but for now let's keep this static and add our variable thus generate a url for that button here. Keep an eye out here. Let's click. Oh, well, look at this URL. After that, we check on this variable length to make sure whether or not we have emails in the list because once we uncheck everything, all the emails will be gone and length would be zero. In that case, we're gonna have the button disabled, but if we have at least one email in there, 
then we create the link using the ATTR href attribute and add this link to that button and remove the disable class so that the button gets enabled. And that's about it for the JavaScript for the HMU project. Next, we will go into the gravity form discussion. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please smash the like button and the subscribe button. This will help me bring more free contents like this to you every week. Thanks again.